or group of Shepherd students right here. Hello to everybody watching at home. Welcome to the 2024 Shepherd Talks brought to you by our amazing sixth graders. Today, the topic is going to be about grit and learning about individuals uh, throughout history that has showed incredible grit, and we're going to be talking about it today. Let's give a round of applause for all of our presenters today. Wave to everybody at that home. Wave to everybody at, out in Tokyo, out in Rome, out in Paris. Thank you for coming. Um, Again, we have a lot of wonderful presentations today. Thank you all audience members for being here. Thank you to everybody tuning in at home. You're in for a real treat. Without further ado, I would love to introduce to you our first presenter today, Mr. Charlie Berman. Walt Disney. Have you ever seen the Jungle Book or, or a princess movie? Well, those have one thing in common. Those were all made and from Walt Disney. Walt Disney grew up in not exactly a storybook childhood. His parents were extremely desperate for money, so much that a basic lifestyle was extremely hard to reach. That's why Walt showed a lot of grit by not giving up even when he lost the chances to have a job that he needed to get to live a basic lifestyle. If I show you this piece of paper, what will you think it is? A piece of paper. But this is not just any piece of paper. Th this paper and many others is how Walt um, expressed his dreams, and, and, th and this is how he did it. So, if, if you saw this child, as, if you saw Walt as a child, you would have never guessed that he became the man he is today, the world's most, one of the world's most known artists and movie creators. Walt Disney went through many challenges as a child. Did you know that his own dad was horrified when he told him when Walt told him he wanted to be an artist? Let's say he create a cartoon character. For fun, let's call him Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. This was his own idea, right from Walt's mind. And imagine if you lost this idea to court. Your one of your greatest ideas at the time was lost to court. And even after losing that, did he give up? No. He still persisted. That's, that's when he took the risk and drove to Hollywood. After many attempts, he finally got a job, which took him to where he is today. After a few movies in Hollywood, he decided to take another risk, start his own company. And, and before I get on to the ending paragraph, I want to say that grit can be shown in many ways, like starting a new school, going for the extra credit, and achieving your dream. Walt Disney grew up in a childhood where barely anything can be achieved. When, but when he saw those problems, he turned them to dust. And he, he made sure that all of his rivals watched him walk through it. Most of Walt's rivals grew up in a place where they can see their dreams and take the easy route, which, which makes the amount of grit that Walt showed is unimaginable. Major problems like he grew up in poverty. He could not find a job for a long time, and his own parents didn't believe in him. And lastly, his very own idea got stolen from him. But that, did that stop him? No. Even with those problems, with even no solution, he still rose to fame. When writing this, I realized that, this, that the reason why it's called Disneyland's called the happiest place on earth is because that was his happiest place. He made it, and that was his happiest place. So before I send you off, there is no problem you can't use with grit. So next time, remember, when you have a problem, you don't need money. You don't need somebody to do it for you. You need grit. In the words of Walt Disney, I decide to see every problem as a, as a way to find a solution. Now go out there and ha find your happiest place on earth. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Wow. Okay, so for, I'm going to bring back to... Um, our opening slide here. So now we can provide feedback for Charlie. Feedback form is found in Google Classroom. Go ahead and open up and provide some awesome feedback for that. Fantastic.
Hold there. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, my friends, let's go ahead and close those Chromebooks to give our next presenter um, indication that you are ready. Um, so something special that we want to acknowledge right now before um, we bring on our next presenter. So for all of you that see up here, we've got a Shepherd Talks 2023-2024 logo. This is a student competition where individuals could submit uh, an original design to have us displayed on this very special day. Well, we want to acknowledge that the winner of this a uh, beautiful photo, quite frankly, this beautiful piece of artwork is our next presenter, Mr. Oliver Gadlin, and we would like to reward him with a prize. Come on up, Ollie. Round of applause. So this is going to be for you, okay? And you want you to put it over here. Life is like a puzzle. You only get the one true picture once you put it all together. This quote reminds me of who I used to be. I used to believe that the only way to succeed was to do it myself, but there is so much more to see in that picture. Now, I feel like I am finally starting to finish the puzzle, and I am starting to finally see the big picture of everything. It's not about what you have done. It's about what you can do. Just really quick. Raise your hand if you have gone through something tough and you thought you could never end it. I see. Well, one way people do things undoubtedly is not a method, but it is something they have inside. This is called grit. Grit is important for many people, as it is a personality trait. Someone has grit if they persevere and never give up. Sometimes grit means to put people's needs in front of your own. You know, for a guy who went through many inconveniences at once, had a child, fought in the U.S. Revolutionary War, and became a lawyer all at the same time, I'm, of course, talking about Alexander Hamilton. Alexander went through it all. He started as a little kid who lost his parents and lost his cousin, but he had one great talent. He could write all day. When Alexander grew up, he decided to immigrate to New York. He tried to get into college and failed. But then, he decided to join the U.S. Revolutionary War, and his life changed. Primarily, Alexander Hamilton showed grit when he had to go through the worst childhood possible. Could you imagine your dad leaving you when you were young? That's right. Alexander's dad left him when he was just a little boy, leaving his single mother the only one to take care of him and his brother. After that tragedy, his mother died in a hurricane. It doesn't really seem like it can get worse from here, but it does. Alexander and his brother were sent to live with his cousin. It got better until his cousin died. This leaves Alexander all alone with his brother. They would be homeschooled, and Alexander would have to get a job. After working a lot, he traveled to New York in October 1772. He tried to get into Princeton University, but he was rejected. He ended up in New York City's King College. Eventually, he saw what Britain was doing to the 13 colonies, so he joined the U.S. Revolutionary War. After he joined the war, he impressed General George Washington with his skills, so he was chosen to be Washington's right-hand man. He worked very hard to be a good fighter in this war, and when it finished, instead of, take, instead of retiring and resting for a long time, he decided to take up the two hardest jobs. First, he was a lawyer. This is already huge for Alexander because he seemed to be working way too much. You think he ended there, but no, he also decided to become a parent. In the book Alexander Hamilton by James Buckley Jr., it explains that Alexander went through a lot in his life and did not give up. It also explains that Alexander found many difficulties in his life, but he chose to have them. This shows grit because Alexander Hamilton wanted to have these challenges. He wanted to go against all of these difficulties so he could have a good name. This grit shows success because it will make Alexander Hamilton known as one of the greatest American founding fathers. Can you imagine wanting all these difficulties? Everyone, raise your hand if you have pushed yourself right into a challenge so you could grow as a person. These results show that you have grit. If you push yourself right into a challenge so you can be a stronger person, and that is grit. From the start, 
People who persevere and never give up have grit. Grit is shown in Alexander Hamilton when he had to face his dad leaving him, his mother dying, his cousin dying, overworking himself so he could grow, and even joining the American Revolution. However, Alexander Hamilton is not the only great gritty person on Earth. I can name so many people, but that would make his speech more than five hours long. Before we end this speech, everyone, I have something for you to think about. Think about times where you have faced massive challenges with grit. With that out of the way, what we can learn from great people like Alexander Hamilton is that people who persevere and never give up will live more successful lives. Now go out there and take on your biggest challenges. Maybe try to finish that overdue work you've been procrastinating. Maybe go take your dog on a walk. Whatever you do, keep moving forward. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you. Um, okay, everybody, let's open up those feedback forms. Let's provide feedback for our wonderful Oliver. Not only a gritty man given his presentation, but also the wonderful winner of our Shepherd Talks logo contest. I had a hard time not humming some of the Hamilton songs, by the way, while you know, some of the words that you were saying and some of the facts was pretty awesome. All right, we will continue in just a moment. Okay, I'm scanning the audience right now with my eyes and I'm seeing that almost all Chromebooks are closed, which means that we're ready for our next presentation. We're ready for our next presentation. Um, let's give a round of applause to Presley, who <clears throat> many of us have a little bit of background about this individual because we actually watched her TED Talk at the beginning of this unit. And so now we can find out a little bit more from what Presley's research has brought her. So hands together one more time for Presley. Amy Purdy, A Shepherd Talk by Presley. So I know each individual in this room has either a favorite activity you like to do, whether it's sports, dance, gaming, arts and crafts, whatever it is. And you probably do it with someone you like or love to do it with and there you do it in a specific area. Now think of that activity right now. So take that activity that you're doing and now do it with no legs. Yes, some of you might say, oh, gaming doesn't use legs or crafts, but that's not true. You get up from crafts to get new supplies or new paints or new stuff. And then for gaming, if your character maybe didn't have legs, how would you be able to move around and win the game? Amy Purdy sadly lost her legs at the age of 19 due to a kidney failure. And she lost blood circulation 
in her body. She pers used perseverance, she used grit, and she never gave up no matter what, and she would try her best and try and try again. Amy Purdy was also a snowboarder. Amy Purdy, when she lost both of her legs, she had to get many surgeries down, and she f and losing her legs was the, one of the biggest challenges that she could ever face, but she pushed through no matter what. When she got admitted to the hospital, they told her that she was going to go on life support from the organ failure, and sadly, after life support, they told her that there is less than a 2% chance of living. After life support, they tried and tried to get her better, but it didn't work, so then she got placed into a coma. Well, how would your parents think if you were in the hospital sick every day? What would they think if you were in a coma and you knew that you could never wake up and your last word you didn't get to say to them? Amy Purdy was so gritty during this time of her life. If you lost your legs, would you get right back up and go to your favorite activity or go straight back to school? And how would people look at you? During And this was very hard during this time of her Amy life. Amy did not only go through losing her legs, she also went through so much mental health issues. Losing your legs might be a toll on your physical body, but it is also such a big toll on your mental health and how you feel about yourself. Mental health was so important for Amy because she knew that there could have been a chance of her not getting back out of that coma and that she couldn't be able to walk again. Amy became very successful from someone who lost her legs. She still snowboard, she was snowboarding. She also got on Dancing with the Stars and she even ran and wrote a book. This is a video of Amy's first run when she got her legs back. Yes, sure, maybe that wasn't the hardest run, or sure she could have done better. But after losing your legs and getting back up after so many physical therapy visits, or going to the hospital and getting like so many different surgeries on your legs, getting back up to do an activity where you use all of those muscles is extremely hard. So now I want you to think how can you be like Amy Purdy? Thank you. Wow. Amy Pretty continues to have incre an incredible story um, and very well done and told by Presley. You bet. If anyone needs any help spelling Amy Curdy or Presley's name, there you go.
All right, my friends and my wonderful audience members, we continue on with yet another individual showing grit that you will likely recognize. Um, you've heard about her, you've heard um, her stories of success, but perhaps you don't necessarily know what it took for her to get there. So let's put our hands together for Aria. What is grit? Grit is overcoming challenges and learning humoristics. Some of you might know Oprah Winfrey from TV, but do you know the grit she had to have to get where she is today? She faced mental, physical, and sexual abuse, as well as, as, well as gender and racial discrimination everywhere, even in her own family. Oprah was born on, yeah. Oprah was born January 29th, 1954, when her mother, Vernita to leave, was only 19 years old. By the time Oprah was born, Vernita had broken up with Vern Winfrey, Oprah's father. During her life, she faced many challenges, including being fired from her dream job and facing discrimination, but she persevered through it all. An example of grit was when she was nine years old, her mom had her 19-year-old cousin babysit her, but instead she was repeatedly sexually abused by him as well as other relatives. Another instance of grit was when her grandmother moved into a new apartment. Well, that may not sound like it used grit, but wait and see what happens. Another occupant, who lived inside, uh, another occupant who lived inside the apartment was white, and she made Oprah sleep outside on the porch just because she was, she was more black than her mother and grandmother. These things used so much grit, but it helped her in the long run to become the queen of talk. Another point, another point of grit was when her mother sent her away to her father's house. My friends, let's talk about grit in real life, right? Um, talking about what it means to understand in a moment when something is important. And typically, if we are having big feelings about something, it's because it's important. And every single one of us knows what it's like to be in a situation, whether it's in our hobbies, in our sports, in our families, with our friends, of, of recognizing when it takes a little extra something to um, push ourselves through what feels like an obstacle in the moment. The reality is, is that every single one of us in here, as we sit here or as we present, are tremendously brave, tremendously gritty, and this is what makes us who we are and what makes us better. So we're gonna take just a quick break for a moment. We're gonna gather ourselves and then we will start again, okay? Thank you for being a respectful audience. All right, my friends, and we are back. 
and we are back. We are going to transition to a presentation right now that you might not know who this individual is. I think y'all know. <laughs> you all know? There's no way. There's no way. You're not, so this is gonna be somebody brand new that you've never heard of. None of the music you've heard of, who she's dating you haven't heard of. Um, uh, concert tours of, of eras of her life. Um, I am not certain. So I'm so excited for you to learn something totally new today. Brand new person. Let's put our hands together for a very special person in my heart and the hearts of many at home. We have Marta. Let's put our hands together for Marta. What? That is so shocking. I've never seen it. Raise your hand if you have ever heard of the song, Shake It Off. Now, raise your hand if you ever heard of Cruel Summer. Both of these appealing, strong, hip-hop, popular songs are always so fun and enjoyable to sing along to. Now, raise your hand if you ever heard of the song, Clean. Raise your hand if you ever heard of the song, This Is Me Trying. These songs are as appealing as Shake It Off and Cruel Summer. They are just hidden with so much grit. It's just like a flower waiting to blossom. Now, most people like to listen to happy pop songs, but sometimes the best types of songs are the ones with the biggest meaning, especially the ones with the most powerful words. All of these beloved songs are made by the person who's been working for over 20 years in music, and her name is Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift has been working on all kinds of genres, which include pop, hip hop, rock, indie folk, country, and even a little bit of jazz. Throughout all of these genres, there have been many challenges. Taylor Swift has been through so many breakups, hatred, and insecurities, but the two things that stuck out to the world was her eating disorder and the 2009 VMA speech. When Taylor Swift was writing, when Taylor Swift was writing her 1989 album, she was going through an eating disorder. In her documentary, she stated, in her documentary, in Miss Americana, she talked about her triggers. She stated that if she were to see a photo of her online, there were explicit comments, or somebody said that she looked pregnant, it would trigger her to stop eating. She was out there performing shows to the world without anyone knowing she was fainting inside. She would refuse to eat, which would almost cause herself to break down during her shows. Taylor Swift has been through so much without anyone even noticing it. She's like a snake slithering hissing around the room, but no one could hear a thing. Snakes are all about her next era, reputation. This is her comeback era. After everyone calls her a snake and other absurd words, she comes back and everyone regrets everything. Her song, This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things, is mostly about the 2009 VMA incident. Let's go back in time. After Taylor's Fearless album, she won Best Music Video of All Time. She was, del after going up on stage and being delighted with pride because of her word, Kanye West comes up on stage and says this. Music, so thank you so much for giving me a chance to win a VMA award. I... Yo, Taylor. I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. Everybody in that audience was astonished. Nobody was expecting for that to happen. Taylor Swift thought that she was the anti-hero. She believed that everyone was booing her. She was insecure. On the other hand, this not only disrespects Taylor, but also Beyonce. This speech had gone viral all around the world in the most brutal way possible. Thankfully, when Beyonce had won an award, she gave Taylor a chance to let her speak. This had brightened things up a little. Now going back to the future, this is why her album Reputation was made. She was rising from the dead and rising back up like no one knew she even existed. Taylor Swift is the music industry. She is unstoppable. Music, so thank oh. you so much for giving me a chance to... 
Taylor Swift has already done so much in such little time. She already recorded 10 full albums worth of music and published more than 200 songs. Not only that, but she has also re-recorded four whole albums. She still needs to do two more. Why, you may ask? Well, back in 2005, Taylor Swift signed a recording contract with Big Machine Records for 13 years. During this contract, she has made six albums. That's more than half of her music. She also decides to she also decides to add some of her extra unreleased music. She did all this because Big Machine Records turned out to be maintaining the copyright in all of those recordings. It is clear that Taylor Swift showed impeccable grit. She was successful because she pushed her way through the top of the music industry. She was struggling to make it to the top. Taylor Swift writes her songs for fans, family, friends, and much, much more. She went through so much hatred, love, etc., and used grit to overcome these challenges. If you are somebody trying to become something that everyone underestimates you by, just remember that some grit and glitter go a long way. Her music will always long live through everyone's hearts. As Taylor has gone through a lot of trouble, breakups, and all kinds of different errors, she will always be fearless, and she will never be afraid to speak now. Thank you. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. So I'm so excited for you to have learned about this brand new, never heard of before purse and just speak now. Marta, unbelievable. If you need to know how to spell Taylor Swift, on the off chance that that's the case, um, but also Marta's last name too, to provide her the feedback about her incredible presentation. You're being a wonderful audience. Dang, I love a good, you know, you get, get to get those, those phrases in there too, those puns. All right, audience members, taking a look around, looking for closed Chromebook screens. Um, again, it means a lot to all of us, whether you presented earlier this week or you're presenting tomorrow, the feedback that you're providing your peers really means a lot when it comes time for you to have the opportunity to read them, okay? Um, we have another presentation right now brought to you by Hannah. And this individual I'm actually, well, Hannah, yes, but also her gritty individual I'm excited to learn more about as well. So without further ado, let's put our hands together for Hannah. Raise your hands if you've ever done a sport or activity. Now keep your hands raised if it took a little or a lot of time or effort. Now that takes grit. I know all of us know what grit means, but in my case, grit means persevering through challenges even when they're out of your control. Now back to the activities. The person I will be talking about today is Caitlin Ohashi. 
Caitlin showed grit by never letting anybody stop her when she was bullied out of the sport she loved most in her life. You probably don't know who she is, so she was a tired gymnast. She was a great gymnast. In fact, she was an eight-time All-American winner, a four-time member of USA Junior National Competition Team, and the winner of the 2013 American Cup. I know from personal experience that gymnastics is hard, but she does it with great passion. It takes a lot of challenges. She went through so much challenges, and here is a great example of how much challenges people go through. Okay, that video was a great example of the challenges everybody goes through in gymnastics. Do you think they never got back up again? No, they got back up and kept going. Grit is more than being brave. Grit is never letting people run your life. It's having the courage to never look back. Finally, it's never being anybody else but you. Even when times were tough, she pushed through. She did a full competition with a broken back and two torn shoulders. That would probably hurt, right? But she loved that sport, so she pushed through. That sport also brought depression into her life at just 13. People bullied her so much online. She once said, I was a bird that couldn't fly. There's a time I was on top of the world. I was Olympic hopeful. I was unbeatable until I wasn't. So Caitlin Ohashi was fat chained to the point where she rarely smiled because she has so much pressure on her. But she ignored that feeling and kept going because she loved that sport. That's, she never let anybody decide who she was going to be. Another example of her showing grit is when people told her she should go to the Olympics, but she decided to go to college and ended up getting a perfect 10 in her team. Her team showed so much passion and personality and inspired others to never let anything stop them. This is her routine. Okay, another trait of grit is moving past the part in your life that made you feel down and move past it with a broader mindset. Kayla Nohashi did just that. Now she speaks about important and tough topics so she can help the greater good. She also writes poetry on body shaming and empowerment, and she frequently volunteers for Project Heal that helps people with eating disorders. Kayla Hashi showed grit by never letting people control her, even when she was bullied out of things she loved most. She never let that stop her. I know many things are hard, but I want to leave you with this. As long as you persevere and use grit and dance like nobody's watching, you'll be just fine. Thank you. Okay, everyone, let's get those feedback forms open. Provide Hannah with some feedback. Those were some epic videos. Right? Like, what do you even call that stunt? Actually, Hannah, do you know? Had a couple of those in there, yeah. And the one where in the middle of the air, then when she split her legs as well. Holy smokes. Roughly the same routine I go through when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Roughly.
So in the event that Oprah Winfrey is watching out there, in the event, first of all, hey girl, um, it would be so exciting if we could be, you know, saying right now, you get a TV and you get a TV or you get a switch and you get a switch. You get a PS11, okay? Um, hasn't even come out yet. Hasn't even been invented, but you've got one. Everyone's leaving here with one. So while that's not going to be the type of, of moment we have right now, um, rather, you're going to get some grit. You're going to get some grit. You're going to get some grit. Aria is going to get some grit. We are all leaving here with a true meaning of grit. So sorry that I can't give you a PS11, but what I will give you is an introduction to an extraordinary person right now. And I'm not talking about Oprah. Let's put our hands together for, Oprah, for Aria. What is grit? Grit is overcoming challenges and learning from your mistakes. Some of you might know Oprah Winfrey from TV, but you know the, but do you know the grit she had to have to get where she is today? She faced mental, physical, and sexual abuse, as well as gender and racial discrimination everywhere, even in her own family. Oprah was born on January 29, 1954, when her mother Vernita Lee was only 19 years old. By the time Oprah was born, Vernita had broken up with Vern Winfrey, Oprah's father. During her life, she faced many challenges, including being fired from her dream job and facing discrimination. But she persevered through it all. An example of grit was when she was nine, her mom had her 19-year-old cousin babysit her. But instead, she was repeatedly sexually abused by him as well as an uncle and other relatives. Another instance of grit was when her grandmother moved into a new apartment. And it may not sound like it used grit, but wait and see what happens. Another occupant who lived there was white, and she made Oprah sleep outside on the porch just because she was more black than her mother and grandmother. And her mother did not say or do anything to help her. These things used so much grit, but they helped her in the long run to become the queen of talk. At one point, her mother sent her away to her father's house because she had a new relationship and she did not want Oprah to mess it up. When Oprah was at her father's house, she loved it there. She finally got to have a normal childhood. But after a little while, her mother demanded that she come back to live with her again. For another example of grit, after high school, she went to Tennessee State University. It was around then that she was invited to come on and try out for the WLAC TV news anchor position. She then in the interview, she sat there and did things she thought Barbara Walters, her idol, might do. During her career at WLAC TV, when she was still an anchor woman, she decided that since her TV career was well underway, she would quit college just one credit short of graduating. With the sharing on top at age 15, she got pregnant and tried to hide it from her parents. Eventually, she told them, and a few days later, the baby boy was born early. He died a few days later, though. But her parents told her to use this as a reset button and to use it wisely because she might not get another. And that is exactly what she did. She returned to Tennessee State University and eventually got a college degree in communication and performing arts. Another reason Oprah had grit was that she was forced into conditions that make anybody else back down. Close your eyes and imagine getting your dream job. It could be anything from a rocket scientist to a barista. Then imagine going to your first day at work and finding it fun just as fun as exciting as you thought it would be. And then the next day your boss comes and demotes you down to the lowest level that you can go. That is what Oprah Winfrey experienced. She had a job at WLAC TV as a co-anchor, and then she was demoted just a little while after to, write, to filing papers and writing scripts. Until one day, WLAC TV hired a new general manager, and he thought there should be a talk show to boost ratings. And he said that Oprah should be on it. Well, that part was his wife's idea. Oprah did not want to do it at first. She even cried and begged not to be on there. But eventually, she, he won, and she tried it out. The first day on the job, she fell in love with the talk show. Her partner on the talk show was a man named Richard Scher. They worked really well, and Oprah finally felt like she was home. The ratings almost immediately went up. She stayed on with People Are Talking for a couple of years. She eventually went to Chicago beca because she had gotten an offer to host a show called Chicago AM, which was eventually renamed The Oprah Winfrey Show. One of my favorite examples of perseverance was when she went to a county that had not had a single black resident for 75 years. This shows she was not afraid of anyone or anything. All this grit adds up and it shows even today she's the CEO of Harpo Studios and its estimated worth is $150 million, as well as her show having about 90 million viewers. To conclude, Oprah Winfrey overcame challenges and learned from her mistakes. The queen of talk is also the queen of grit. Thank you. right. Fantastic. 
Okay, let's provide some feedback. And as we're continuing to do that, we're going to pause just for a second. We're going to wave at the camera. We're going to say goodbye. We're going to say, have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. Stay gritty, everybody.